PJ hit us up, originally from Green Cove Springs, Florida, currently in Gainesville, Georgia. And PJ said yesterday, FSU flipped the number one tight end in the country from Georgia. Yes, they did. Are the Seminoles officially the top dog in the state of Florida following a 10-win season and recruiting at a top five level? Have you ever been around someone who knows they're dressed better than everyone in the room? And, and that person walks in and they ask like they have no clue. Hey, how, how do I look? Do I look okay? How do I look? That's FSU right now. FSU, they're doing exactly what I would do. I'm not blaming you guys. I'm just saying you're trying on a tux and you walk out into the room and everyone else has got sandals, shorts, tees, and flip-flops on. And or Sandals and flip-flops, by the way. What an what a outfit. You got the tux on. They got the beach wear on. And you walk out. Guys, do I look okay? Do, how, how do I look in this? Yeah, Florida State coming off a 10-win season. You do look better than Miami that missed a bowl game last year. Absolutely. Knocking on the door of an ACC title contender season, Florida State. You look a little better than Florida does right now, having barely made a bowl game and, and then getting boat raced in the bowl game. Yes, you, you guys need it. You want your flowers for a second. Here they are. Do I sound a little harsh in this critique? Probably. Do I mean for it to sound that way? Not necessarily. Should it sound that way? Most likely. We need some continuity. I need some consistency from you guys. Last year was great to see. Okay, since everyone else is going to give you the tire pump, I'm going to make sure and check the pressure here. I'm going to make sure and remind you there was that little back-to-back-to-back speed bump in the middle of the year. Doesn't mean anything. You still had a great year. Doesn't mean anything as it relates to this year. Just want to remind you, there, there is still a little ways to go on the climb up the proverbial ACC college football playoff mountain. But yeah, you're, you're well ahead right now of the programs in your own state. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about UCF in a second. But I got a stat for you. And I, I'd love to take credit for it. But I cannot take credit for this one. Producer Jesse, he's over there today. I'm playing him some Kenny G. Because we, we play saxophone about once a week around here. There's a guy who hangs out down near our office, who plays wonderful saxophone. Dude should be on Broadway. Instead, he's in Printer's Alley late at night. And so I was just, I was just serenading producer Jesse. He's paying me no mind whatsoever. And then all of a sudden, he's, voila! What is it, Jesse? He said, if you combined portal and recruiting rankings, Florida State has finished behind Florida and Miami each of the past four cycles. How do we make sense of it? Homestead of thunk it. Florida State, in combined portal and recruiting rankings, has finished behind Florida and Miami not one year, not two, not three, four years in a row. And yet there is the result on the field. Now, it certainly looks like those tables are turning. It doesn't look like that will be extended into a fifth year in a row, certainly. But in the meantime, Florida State's just steadily ascending. And I can't say the same about the other entities in the state necessarily. And so you're left to wonder, well, Florida State seems like they have things figured out. How differently could this conversation sound a year from now? Aha, that's a good question. How differently could this conversation sound a year from now? Well, on one hand, we may have seen Florida State go back up everything people are saying about them. And they may go win the ACC. They may be uh, knocking on the door of college football playoff contention, and all of a sudden they, they've arrived and they're in the conversation for the foreseeable future. That would make it a moot point. Maybe Florida State fell off a little bit. Maybe Miami surges this year. You got Shannon Dawson down there at offensive coordinator, and he resurrects the career of Tyler Van Dyke. And uh, who knows who Mario Cristobal is about to go add in the portal this week and in the next two weeks. Maybe they just go from five wins to nine wins. And all of a sudden, people are saying, hey, now he's got it. He's got it settled in and dialed in the way he wants. If Jaden Rashada had stuck with Florida, we would sound a whole lot different about them right now. As it stands, things are pretty shaky at Florida. But maybe they overcome some odds. Maybe they're like plus six this year in one possession win-loss ratings. And all of a sudden, they're an eight-win team. Point is, there are some... There are some negative sides to that coin, too. It could just be a disaster this year for Miami. It could be a disaster for Florida. And if either one of those things happen, those programs would be in turmoil, a whole lot of conversation around them. 
independent of Florida State. My point is, man, it's like pivot years for all three of them. And we're sitting here talking about it in 2023, but how about January or February of 2024, especially after the signing day? What will it sound like then? Now, as for this big three, this big three nonsense, as Gus Malzahn and company would, would have me correctly articulate it, there is no longer a big three down there, at least if you're talking about Power Five teams. We do have to welcome the Central Florida Knights to the conversation. Now, I didn't you know, plan a parade or anything. We don't have a, a, a banner to unveil. They're the experts on hanging the banners down there. But, I kid because I care, but, you know, there's, there, there's not a whole lot of gap between us talking about Florida, Miami, Central Florida. In fact, in some of the critical metrics we look at, we would mention Central Florida before one or two of those teams. And hey, we actually saw them on the Every Given Saturday tour last year. Did we not? Yes, we did. And so I mentioned that because we cannot say that. Actually, we can say it about Florida because we saw them against Tennessee. We didn't see Miami last year. We didn't see Florida State. But we did see Central Florida. So hey, if we see you, that's one of the most surefire metrics that you're at the head table. That's why we respect Tulane. And I actually wore a Tulane shirt the other night to hit softballs. I, how much better does it get? That one really took a sideways turn at the end. But yeah, Florida State, best team in Florida right now. One way or another, that's going to be like alphabet soup this year. We're just going to mix that whole thing up. 